Hi, it's me again, back with another video of the Conquerors 3. In this video, I'm going to explain fobs or forward operating bases and teach you how to use them in a Conquerors match. Usually it makes sense to place all your troop production buildings next to the base you start off with because you already have a command center protecting it. However, we must acknowledge the size of maps in this game like World or Mediterranean and infer that moving troops across the massive map takes a really long time. If you just finish producing an army of heavy soldiers in your base but your opponent is attacking your power plants then it would take too long to defend your plants and they would have already done too much damage to your economy before your soldiers reach them. This is where fobs come in. A standard fob in the Conquerors would be a miniature base apart from your original base and closer to your opponent's base. This essentially does two things, which is easy access to the crystals between your fob and command center and also making it much easier to defend from attacks on those crystals. There are no minimum requirements for what a fob should be. It could either be a turret next to a power plant or an entire base with barracks, forts, and a tank factory. But there is a difference between a good fob and a bad one. Firstly, a good fob is located in a strategic point in the map. The closer your fob is to an enemy's base, the higher the chance is for you to lose the fob and waste money on it, which is why it's very risky to place it next to the enemy's base, especially at the beginning of the game. This form of fob is called rushing, and it requires either a very incompetent enemy team or a very skilled rusher to successfully initiate it. But but if you do it right, it gives you a massive advantage over the opponent. But for now, it is safe to place the fob near the middle of the map. That way you can secure half of the crystals which gives you a steady flow of income. To build a fob, you first need a building so that you can build around it, which can either be a power plant or a construction yard. Usually it's easier to build a fob near a power plant, but if you think that a location where there is no crystal can give you a much more effective fob placement, then go ahead and use the construction yard. A good way to start off a fob is with a barracks. Heavy soldiers are highly convenient for their speed and offensive capabilities. Now that you have some sort of army in your fob, you can keep your opponent behind enemy lines and defend your side of the map a lot easier. Of course, if the enemy sees that you have a strong resistance from the fob and can't get around it, he will target the fob next. It's quite easy to defend in a good fob because you would have many production buildings that can still produce units while the enemy is attacking. But let's say that they are making a countering fob to the against yours. Now you have a real battle. If you're quick to catch that the opponent is making a fob by either placing a barracks or other production buildings and you have an already decent army, you can defend their fob and destroy it before they can form an army. Beware that the enemy will most likely place defending buildings such as turrets or forts. If the enemy does that, be confident in your army and hope that they can kill the turrets. But also, be aware that if they place too many turrets, you have to retreat. If that situation happens, then it is a very good chance to attack other of their buildings such as their power plants because they just spent a large amount of money on those turrets and would not have the money to defend your army. Let's say that you couldn't invade the enemy's fob before they created an army because you either didn't have a strong army or were too late. This would create an intense stalemate with both fobs having equally strength in armies and defensive buildings. The best way to progress through the match for a victory is to invade the enemy's economy with a small portion of your army while keeping your fob strength the roughly the same or higher than theirs. Focusing on a fob will be too much money spent and will leave you vulnerable to attacks behind your fob. A good way to invade the enemy's economy is with aircraft, which most likely is always space fighters. Space fighters are legendary for being a strong and killer and handicapping the enemy. Another video will be needed to discuss on how to use space fighters remarkably, but for now you can just send your space fighters to destroy the enemy's power plants while also being aware for anti-air turrets. It is best to retreat a place defended by even one anti-air turret because of their damage against aircraft. So just move on to the next power plant. The Space Link and Space Fighters are extremely expensive and it would be in your best intention to place the Link in a safe location and to also keep your Space Fighters alive. If many of your Space Fighters get heavily damaged, 
it is a good idea to place a hospital, say near your fob, and let at least one space fighter stay stationary there to heal. As the game progresses, switch out healed space fighters for damaged ones to continuously have your space fighter army being healed. Taking out the enemy's income is vital to destroy their fob, as they won't be able to keep up with yours, and you'll eventually have a strong army to invade theirs. But please be extremely alert that your economy isn't being taken out too, which would cause you to have a dangerously low chance of winning. If you successfully take out their fob, however, you can conquer many of their crystals on their side of the map, slowly cornering them down to just their base, in which you can attack at the end. Let's go back to what people call rushing. Sometimes, especially on 5v5 maps, one or more members of the enemy team will place a fob very close to your base on high ground which is only accessible through garrison units up there with bunkers or by having aircraft fly on top. This makes it very hard for the defending team to attack the fob and cause panic on them. The best way to defend this is by keeping the rushers fob army in place and not let them invade your base or crystals while your allies can fight the rest of the enemy team without being handled handicapped by the rushers invasion of their economy or command centers, but you should never let more than one member of your team defend the rushers fob as it will cost too many resources wasted while the rest of the enemy team obliterates the rest of the map. If you already see one of your allies defending against the fob, focus on something else and trust that they can defend it. See if you can lower the enemy's economy or you could even do the same as a rusher by placing a fob on high terrain land. Now if you want to be the rusher in a match of conquerors, it can be very dicey. You're leaving your power plants at the hands of your allies as they are the only ones that can defend them. It also wouldn't work if your own team isn't very supportive of the rush and decide not to do much to help. Nevertheless, if you are to initiate it, it must be done in a very short amount of time. Depending on the map, the correct place to rush and place a file could either be at a super crystal near their base or at high terrain if it's next to their base. Having a fob next to the base isn't to destroy the base as quickly as possible since the command centers can be really deadly, especially if they're super bases. The goal of having a fob next to the base is to secure more of the map's crystals and prevent the enemy team from forming an economy before they get a chance. A successful rush can end the game extremely quick, either by the enemy team not being able to form a decent army or if most or all of them leaves. It also can make the game last a long number of intense minutes if the enemy team can defend your fob with their own army. To put it briefly, fobs are a meta strategy used by most competent players and it is your decision alone to decide many things, like where to place it and what to do with it. Anyways, this has been my second Conquerors video and I would love if you guys would suggest any guides on strategies that you would like to master in as I can provide tips to help. Thanks for watching and see ya.